This is the movement inspired by Theresa Spence, called Idle No More. Their campaign has swept Canada recently, from demonstrations to blocking rail lines and border crossings. Toronto used to have explicitly racist laws that prevented Aboriginal people from gathering together. What is Idle No More looking for? What more steps does the Harper government have to take uh, before the Indigenous uh, peoples of Canada say, we have gotten what we need? And by our future, I mean the American domestic oil supply produced in Alberta, Canada. And welcome to the show. This is Talk Radio with a Difference. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. We're going to be bringing you entertainment news and everything that lamestream media refuses to bring you. Why? Because we're Radio Free Canada. And welcome to Monday, January the 13th? 14th. 14th. January the 14th, 2013. Hey, you got that right. I know, I know. I can't uh, believe it. I've actually got my... We need more coffee in the studio this morning. <laughs> What you're going to hear is our opinion and our opinion only. Okay. It's protected under Section 2 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We're also going to be bringing you media as described under International Fair Usage Copyright Law. We're going to be talking about the fact that Vic Taves got his 17-year-old babysitter pregnant. Again? Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> No, no. There will be no double tap there. And, of course, we're going to be talking about I Don't Know More, which is vitally important if you're a citizen, if you believe that the laws are supposed to work and we're supposed to honor our commitments, you might want to pay attention to this. But if you're an in-the-box type of thinker... If you think that McDonald's is a restaurant... Or that CHBC is a news... Then, then stop, stop listening, listening now. now. We're going to bring you a reason to smile and start things off with Rick Mercer. A message from the oil industry. Climate change. Global warming. It's a problem that could affect our future. And by our future, I mean the American domestic oil supply produced in Alberta, Canada. It's like a whole other country up there. <laughs> but don't worry. Stephen Harper, he thinks like us. He's got a new plan, and we endorse it. And if we endorse it, I think that tells you just how effective it is. <laughs> Here's the plan. First, we got some tough new rules for oil sands development, except for the stuff we've already built. And of course, the stuff that we have planned. After that, we got tough new rules. It's like tough new rules for cars that kick in after we invent the flying car. Or gun control, but just for the disintegrating laser guns that have yet to be invented. Any day now. Second, carbon storage technology. Now, here's how that works. The bitumen extractor burns natural gas to extract oil from the sands here. See that? Then we install a pipe that redirects the flow of some of that money to Ottawa, and then they let us keep doing it over and over again into the future. It's a great plan. It's their third environmental plan in two years. So they're getting good at it. The Tory environmental plan. Oil industry approved. The oil industry, turning northern Alberta into a moonscape since 1981. I love starting things out like that. Rick Mercer talking about what we're talking about. Energy policy and the Canadian government. Make sure that you've got a good sense of humor. Make sure that you clear your throat before you turn on the microphone. And make sure that you've got a good day going. Because we're part of the conscious revolution. We're a part of the activists who are changing the world. And we're really happy that you joined us. And there has been a little movement happening here in Canada and across the states. Actually, all over the world. It's called Idle No More. Yes, Idle No More has stepped up to the world stage. They're organized. They're calling for a action January the 28th, the day that our House of Commons goes back to work. And we're going to be there with that one. Let's run a story. Just get a little background going. This is Radio Free Canada. Inside a wooden stockade, Chief Teresa Spence refused solid food for more than a month. In her first public appearance in days, she said the Canadian government is still not showing her people the respect they deserve. So this is why this is important to renew this relationship. Because this government has been abusing us, raping the land, you know, like he's so much in control. 
This is the movement inspired by Theresa Spence, called Idle No More. Their campaign has swept Canada recently, from demonstrations to blocking rail lines and border crossings. The demands range from greater consultation to complete self-government for First Nations groups. Like the Occupy movement that started in the U.S., there's a broad agenda, but no national leaders, making the meeting with the Canadian government a challenge. They express a generalized anger and frustration, which is perfectly understandable, uh, is completely justified. Uh, but um, really, it does, it, for progress to be made in the political process, it does take a leadership with specific demands that can be examined and either accepted or, or not. Not all of the representatives of Canada's First Nations went to the meeting, some agreeing with Theresa Spence the agenda was too vague. They joined the protesters on the streets. Instead of going to the Parliament building, as was the plan, the protesters have stopped here, outside the Canadian Prime Minister's office, and they're moving to surround the building to make sure their demands are heard inside. So far, this grassroots movement hasn't achieved the change it wants, but they have brought their issues into the center of political debate. They may be a fractured group divided from traditional leaders and more radical than their community is used to, but the movement is growing and more confrontation likely lies ahead. Daniel Lack, Al Jazeera, Ottawa. Now, there was the clip, and if you go on the CBC, when they show that uh, interview that Stephen, uh, that uh, Chief Spence gave, they only focus on the heckler, not what she had to say. No, the fact that the, the governor general isn't meeting with her. Yeah, okay. And they keep saying it. If you listen to CBC or CTV, they keep saying divisions, fractions, they're disorganized, blah, blah, blah. Same thing, Global National, they talked about the fact that she took in more than just water. Yeah. They talked about that. They focused on that, not the fact of her demands. And do you notice one thing that CBC and Global and all these mainstream guys will not describe is the elements of poverty created by legislation that's racist by nature. Exactly. Actually, our Operation Maple has something to say about that. Okay, hey, let's run this clip. You guys make up your own mind. Use your intellect and question what we're talking about. But here's the clip. In the days when we had openly racist uh, laws in Toronto uh, uh, around settlement patterns and so on, Aboriginal people, First Nations, Inuit, uh, Métis and so on, were not allowed to congregate in any one uh, area. And so if you look at a map, there's a little India and there's, a little, there's Chinatowns and there's little Tibet and all that kind of stuff. There isn't one because Toronto used to have explicitly racist laws that prevented Aboriginal people from gathering together. For too long, we've had this historic injustice. And a few years ago, Prime Minister stood up in the House of Commons and apologized, and that was a powerful moment. What hasn't happened, though, since that apology has been that reconciliation, that uh, process of addressing the injustice and correcting the injustice. So I don't know more is building on, uh, on, on that. You know, certainly the various pieces are, it seems to me, all entirely predictable. We've got, uh, you know, the government wanting to blame stupid Indians for being bad managers and drunks and, you know, they're going to do all the blaming the victim stuff that they possibly can and they're going to try and evade responsibility. If that doesn't work, they'll try and blame the provinces or the municipalities or somebody else. But I think that what Idle No More has done is it's not only captured the uh, attention of Canada but increasingly around the world and they know that Chief Spence is on hunger strike and people are are, are are paying attention and so some seeds are planted which it's hard to know exactly what uh, is going to grow out of these. But are you hopeful? I'm extremely hopeful. The amazing statistic right there. Two percent of the population is Toronto and thirty percent of them are homeless. Yeah. 2% of the population is Aboriginal. 30% yeah. of them are homeless. Well, 30% of the homeless population yeah, is, Aboriginal. is Aboriginal. Yeah, okay. So yeah. <laughs> it baffles the mind. I mean, that, that seems statistically anomalous. And anomalous? That's the word I was yes. looking for. But remember, you're 10 times more likely to serve uh, prison time if you're Native, and you will serve 10 times the amount of prison time if you're Native. And this all goes back to the royal proclamation of keeping the Indians on the reserve. 
Yeah, you know, you can't have them, you know, actually demanding freedom and sovereign rights. Yeah. The um, most offensive thing, though, that's not being covered is the fact that Native Indians are not in control of their budgets. It's not like we've got our own commercial banks that are issuing us fractional reserve lending money for ourselves. That's another legislated racism. Oh, it's all it's all tied in. It's not like we're all it's not like we're not all natives. We're also all Palestinians. Yeah. We're also all uh, socialists. And we're also all Greeks. You know, that's awesome because when we were out there on the weekend, white people are coming up. And I'm saying there's a division because obviously there is. We have different genetic backgrounds. But they said, we're all in the same boat together. And I said, yeah, I'm glad you got it. And we're talking about retired people telling me these things. It was awesome. Um, So The prime minister did meet with the native leaders over the weekend. Yes. And, okay, let's run the clip. You make up your mind. To discuss this further from Hamilton is Amika Burning with the Idol No More movement. Many thanks for joining us here uh, on Press TV, Ms. Burning. Now, uh, there have been promises of high-level dialogue. How do you see uh, the day's uh, proceedings? Do you think it ended on a positive note? Um, yes, um, I think they, they've agreed to uh, start to get the process rolling, which is, um, which is always good. It's uh, better than where we were before. Four. Um, I mean, there's there's still much that has to be done, but you know, at least at least it's now being acknowledged the situation, which is you know one step at a time, right? Other than just talks and a debate being started, what is Idle No More looking for? What more steps does the Harper government have to take uh, before the Indigenous uh, peoples of Canada say we have gotten what we needed? He, he has a duty to consult with. Uh, First Nations people. I don't know why he he believes that he just doesn't have to hold up his end of the bargain and how he feels that he can just pass things through without that consultation. But he needs to get back on on back in line with those those agreements that have always been right. And very quickly, if you can, um, the absence of the Governor General, who is the representative uh, of of the Queen Elizabeth, uh, is being criticized by many Aboriginal leaders. What do you, as a protester and part of the Idle No More movement, make of his absence? Um, I think uh, it's just it's just another way of stalling the process. You know what I mean? Um, I think. As long as, as long as they can, as long as the government is only doing a little bit here and a little bit there, I think they're just sort of trying to appease people, like you know, giving the the uh, illusion of actually having that uh, that consultation going on, but not actually committing to it. Um, so again, until until it's, it's until we see that they are full in on actually communicating with us and having us on the forefront of that consultation it's it's again it's just words we're waiting to see action okay mika burning there with the idle no more movement joining us on the line from hamilton was burning thank you very much for your comments here on press tv we see it all over the place that people are looking at the way that the prime minister has misbehaved during this thing. And that's a report you won't hear on, you know, local corporate media. Oh, the fact that they're just going through the motions. Honestly, they are. And there's no resolution. They're not ending poverty. The only thing that the Harper government is focused on is benefiting a few super huge corporations and making sure that unemployment and joblessness continues in on this in well, you country. know, he considers the chief executive officer of the corp cooperate or the corporation of Canada. Yeah, he thinks he's the big. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, know. I know he has illusions. I remember that RMR, the tiny Stephen thing, <laughs> is that a little more accurate than you could possibly understand. <laughs> I think he's overcompensating. He says, "Yes, yes." Overcompensating for shortcomings, our imperious leader, Mr. Robocall himself. We are going to be covering more stuff, and we've got stuff coming up on innovation, the environment. Pipelines are coming up next, yes? Yes, we are. Okay, so let's cover those pipelines things and get that going. We'd like to thank all of our friends from Facebook and all of our friends right across from every activist activist group that we are broadcasting to. You are the change And we're proud to back you up. Remember, if you're the only person standing up against what's wrong, if you're standing up for what's right, you're the person that counts. 
I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. We'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in.